Alright folks, this is my first attempt at making a how-to video of any length. I've had a couple of one, one or two minute videos, but this is a video for repairing your interior panels. Uh, in my case, it's specifically an aircraft, the Mooney M20J, and uh, the plastic panels which are 36 years old now and getting quite brittle. So the most important piece of this puzzle was what to use for a backing. So <clears throat> I found this Scotch Extremely Strong mounting tape at Home Depot. Four feet of that for ten bucks. And then uh, the Loctite epoxy plastic um, it kind of had mixed results with that, but um, it didn't seem like it really came out uh, equal parts or didn't really harden up as much as I was hoping it would, but eventually got the job done. And then uh, the Dremel with uh, a cutting disc and a uh, wire wheel was the main things that I used on those uh, on that tool. All right, this is the interior of 1016 Sierra, 1981 M20J, and just got things out, started to get things taken off. There's a few more pieces to pe take off before we start cleaning, and we'll see where I go from there. All right, we're going to start out by cleaning the panels with crud cleaner. Always had good luck with that. And then we're going to follow up with this TSP cleaner, which I've never used before, but it's supposed to take the rest of it all off. Alright, we've washed it down with the crud color. And now using the T TSP Scrub, but it doesn't seem to be taken off any more. Alright, here we've got all of the panels cleaned up with the crap cleaner, crud cleaner, whatever it's called, and the TCP. So next, we'll be starting to look at repairing some of these spots. He's actually in pretty good shape, but my hope is to be able to fix some of these cracks. So here we have the door, upper door, plastic from the airplane. We decided to go ahead and replace this from the new piece from Plain Plastics. Our mechanic suggested we just replace it rather than trying to repair it due to the fragility that it's showing. Um, a lot of these holes have been enlarged and covered up with bigger washers already. And that'll allow me to use this upper portion here to get enough pieces to um, fill in the ashtray holes. So we'll sh hopefully that'll work out okay. So here's the first repair attempt. I let it sit overnight and start to use it on Dremel to uh, smooth it out, clean it up. And I've got a, there's a gap here that it's going to need to be uh, refilled. Still kind of weak on that end. Back to the show you though. It's the tape that uh, that's doing a good job sticking on there. That's the backing. The backing tape is uh, not peeling off at all. So we're going to go ahead and give this another coat to fill in. This is kind of a big gap to be using this. Uh, it was supposed to be 
having some uh, JB Weld putty uh, plastic. I've not been able to find that at any of the local stores. So I was just using the Loctite epoxy um, plastic epoxy. So we'll give that another whirl. As I said, this is my practice piece anyway, see if this uh, fills out any better. Alright, so now this time I used the cord, weather stripping clay, if you want to call it, to uh, fill where exactly I want the, the uh, epoxy to be. So last time I did it after the fact. So I'm trying to be proactive, and make sure it stays right where I want it. So I was giving it a squirt, and I didn't pre-mix it, so I'm going to mix it in there now. Try to get it to form to where I want it. And we're obviously going to have to wait another 24 hours before I can try sanding this. Uh, so far, it hasn't been quite 24 hours, but it's been still kind of tacky as far as it's just kind of a, a rubbery consistency after the fact so um, it doesn't sand as well as I thought it was going to sand but there you have it so on this uh, pilot window I've got two cracks I'm going to try to repair the rest of them all look pretty good. There's uh, a bit of cracking going on there. It's not quite through yet. And there's a hole back in that corner there. So I'm going to try this uh, technique on, on these pieces and uh, see how it goes. Okay, here we have cut out the bad pieces, making sure I got through all the Real fragile pieces. Obviously, that that uh, hole back in the corner there is quite fragile. So just touching it, you kind of blew it out. And so might be a little interesting trying to get a concave uh, curve into that. We'll see how it goes. So here you can see I've got the backing tape installed. I was pretty impressed. This this tape is very quite malleable and uh, has no problems didn't heat it up or anything just at you know 60 degrees in the basement here so those are on there good and we'll be filling in the other side alright so here's the uh, repairs as I've got the epoxy in there so this is, epoxy's got a consistency of like honey, so having the cord wrapped around it, keeping it in place, trying to keep it as vertical or as, uh, say as flat as I possibly can. And uh, I think that hole's going to be nice. Uh, the tape behind it is uh, getting the form on it so we're just filling in the, the holes hopefully uh, this doesn't drip out too much so to give you an idea of what I've been doing using the Dremel with the cutting disc on it to cut out this was, was just a crack so I've actually enlarged it and uh, taken off the stress points and uh, we'll be taping that in position and then filling it with the the goop. Okay, here's with the epoxy in here, and uh, definitely float in there real nice. It certainly helps to be able to have it on a flat surface and let it cure like that. Um, I think this is going to work out real nice. So on some of my pieces, I think I'm going to be having to do two stages, to especially have different directions. You have to do it one way. Let the uh, 
let it dry flat and do it the other way. Supposedly a 20 minute setup time and uh, this should be able to be uh, just tacky. So I have not really seen that yet but we'll see. Alright so here we have the repair after it's cured. Still a little bit of a indentation there in that crack. This one over here. So you obviously have some excess, especially on this one where I had the cord, clay cord run along this side there to uh, keep it from running out. Um, started using a distinguished razor, uh, razor blade. That didn't work so well, or I should say what works a lot easier is the Dremel with a wire wheel on it, uh, gently taking off the excess. You can see it's also taking the color off here too, but it's going to get painted anyway, so it's good to go. Okay, reading the directions better, I missed the, uh, initially missed the discussion of using um, masking tape covering a curve. So I filled it in. This is actually the second time around on these points, uh, these two cracks. Filled it in and uh, again and then put masking tape over and form the uh, keep the glue in the cracks that I'm trying to fill. Alright, so here we have the finished product here after taking off the, the masking tape. Still end up with a couple of voids and uh, sometimes the masking tape ended up pulling up some of the glue and uh, so now, uh, going ahead, a 764th inch drill bit, and drill, redrill our uh, holes that we're going to need. But you can tell, I mean, this is much stronger than it was. These were all totally ready to break apart. So uh, it's definitely not a perfect repair and I suppose if I was a little more artistic and a little more um, took a little more time I'm kind of under the gun to get this done you can see a pretty good gap at this point I mean there's still glue underneath that that's part of the glue that, that got pulled out when I pulled the masking tape up um, but anyways uh, it's definitely going to be better than it was, but not perfect. So maybe you have better luck than me. Now right, here's the last thing I'm going to show you. This is uh, the one repair that was uh, cut out. And you can still see there's still a gap right there, but this is after painting. And... Uh, say it's not perfect but it's certainly a lot better than what it had looked like initially so we'll get this uh, posted on YouTube and hopefully help some other Mooney enthusiasts